when you when you hear it like that, it's uh, I've done a few little things. It's uh, wow. Thank you very much. It's uh, it's obviously uh, a pleasure to uh, to be here uh, tonight, and obviously uh, this afternoon at the uh, this morning at uh, Kings High School was a was a wonderful experience to be back in the school and uh, to uh, to see all the students and the pride that they have in the in the school is just uh, it's incredible and. Uh, where Darren and myself were lucky enough at the end, uh, the, the school did the school harper and uh, just got the goosebumps and it was, uh, it was wonderful. And uh, yeah, it's always, always nice to, to come home to Dunedin. Uh, you know, when you, when you always fly into Dunedin and you see the harbour and you go, yeah, that's, that's home, that's real home. And uh, it's the same when you drive over the, over the motorway coming into Dunedin, you have that same feeling, don't you? So it's, uh, it's great to be back. And, um, so thank you very much for inviting me here. I'd like to uh, just uh, tell a few stories about my my past at Kings and, and being in Dunedin and what I've done over the last 25 years, I suppose. Well, 30 years since I've been at, at, at Kings. Flies by, doesn't it? 30 years, I'm, I'm sure uh, a lot of you, are, probably 50 years, is that right? 50 years ago? Yeah, what about 60s? Hands up for 60s? 70 years? <laughs> Seventy years ago. Wow, that's yeah, that's fantastic. So it's wonderful to be a part of uh, of the Kingsman. And uh, all right, so I'd like to say, obviously, uh, I've been in Australia now for twenty five years or so now. So um, I do get hassled uh, when I come back home to Dunedin of, of sounding a bit like an Aussie. And uh, when I'm back uh, in Australia, I get uh, hassled for sounding like a Kiwi. So uh, so I can't really win wherever I go, but. Uh, I'm a very proud uh, Highlander supporter, and you know, a couple of years ago when they when they won, I was just uh, I was letting everyone know about it in, in Australia, and um, obviously I, I still support uh, the All Blacks, and even if uh, New Zealand were playing tentatively or something, I'd support New Zealand. So uh, it's quite. I must say, when I was doing like this uh, in Australia, is about the uh, 98-99. I was touring throughout Australia, and I was the uh, well, Rob Guest and myself were the only Kiwis out of, uh, out of about 35 Australians in the cast. I was, I was keen, you know, the All Blacks were playing well. It was 98, 99. So I thought, okay, guys, I'm going to put on 10 bucks each. I'll go for the All Blacks, you can go for Australia. I asked Rob to do it. He did, he's a cheapskate, so he didn't do it. So uh, unfortunately, they lost four in a row that year. <laughs> so you can imagine, uh, 350 bucks, I lost every game. <coughs> And then by the end of the fourth game when we lost, I go, come on, have a bet. And some of them didn't even bet. I was going, come on, you've got to give me back some money, surely. But, uh, you know, those are, those are strains, eh? What can you say? Um, so I, I, grew up, uh, I grew up in the Bronx of Corstaphine. And, and, you know, I'm actually proud of it. Um, my, my family were hardworking. My dad was a butcher. My uh, mum a nurse. And uh, we had some tough times up in, in, up, up, up in Corstaphine. I remember doing the uh, milk run, the old milk run, and uh, coming home after, after after the milk run and walking into a few uh, less notable people living in the uh, in the course of pain, and I said, "Well, if you want through this lane, what are you going to give me?" So uh, I'd have to give them my twenty cents hot chips and my uh, K bars and stuff like that. Twenty cents hot chips, wasn't that great? Do you remember those days, um, ladies and gentlemen? Um, I went to uh, the Cantor Intermediate and uh, we always watched the, uh, the inter schools from across the fence. We watched the whole school lining up and doing the harker. What a sight that was. And uh, oh, it's your suitcase. There we go. I'm going to blow up. There we go. It took you a while to, to, uh, to see that there. Ladies and gentlemen, now, so uh, when, you, when I started at Kings, I was going, oh, I can't wait to get into Kings and, and to be a part of it all. Um, I must admit, uh, I was a bit of a class clown in my early years. Um, yeah, I suppose I've always a bit of a showman, so uh, I enjoyed having a bit of a laugh and um, sometimes got a bit in trouble. I remember Dan McLean uh, getting out a piece of wood at one point to, uh, to uh, tell me what, uh, what to do. Uh, but uh, I certainly loved Kings. I got immersed in everything. Um, I joined the school choir. I got into the school musicals and I tried two new sports. So I, I used to play uh, softball and soccer, so I started hockey and cricket in uh, in the third form, and uh, 
absolutely love those two sports. Uh, we were lucky enough at, at King's that we had some fantastic teachers, and uh, they were, you know, led by, of course, with Ian Simpson at the back there, who was just a wonderful rector, like Dan as well. You can, you can tell that the pupils looked up to, uh, to Ian, and, uh, which is exactly the same, walking around with Dan today. It's wonderful to see the, uh, the admiration of the pupils. So, um, where was I? Better have a look here. Yes, yeah, so uh, we, we obviously had wonderful teachers, and uh, when I was in the fourth form, uh, we were lucky enough to have uh, Dave Ross join the staff, and obviously he absolutely turned around hockey at King's High School. Uh, you know, what an athlete he was, and, and to see someone at the highest level, uh, like, like uh, Mr. Darren Smith here, he was uh, so, so wonderful just to watch and to learn off. Um, you know, he gave us that uncompromising uh, level of play, you had to play in the, in the right spirit, and uh, it was wonderful. We also had John Cushion, of course, as our cricket coach at that time, another first-class cricketer and uh, someone who we all aspire to. So I think King's has always had, had those teachers where you, you've got role models to look up to, and I think that's, that's just means so much as a pupil. I'm sure yourself you've had, had teachers when you're at school as well. Uh, so along came the fifth form after my junior years, and, and I suppose at that time I really had a, had a look at myself. I, I, I thought I'd better start to uh, straighten up a little bit, not be the class clown, and, and actually try and make something of myself. So I, I made a clear decision to, to work hard at, at my schoolwork. I made a decision to really train hard at sports and to just give it everything I got. Uh, before I knew it, I, I, I made the first 11 of, of the cricket and, uh, and the hockey teams and then went on to the, to the Otago teams. And, it kind of proved to me that when you really dedicate your time and, and really focus on something, it's very achievable. You know, I was I was not a star player like uh, Darren Smith here. was the superstar player. I was, I was a bit of a toiler, a bit of a hard worker, and uh, but I was a hard nut to get past, you know, in the defence, or I was a hard person to get away at, at the bowling crease. Um, I suppose uh, during that time also I, I got heavily involved in, in the musical side of things. The, uh, the performing arts. Obviously, uh, as a uh, at a boys' school, um, singing is not really looked upon as a, as a great thing to do. Uh, I think that's changing. I hope it's changing. Um, I suppose I was lucky that I was pretty good at sports, so uh, you know, no one was going to hassle me for uh, singing up on the stage. Um, yeah, I, I suppose getting into school musicals. I, I, I've got to admit. I really wanted to uh, start school musical so I could get along to the girls' school next door. Uh, I've got to be honest, you know, uh, there were about 100 people in the, uh, the school musical, 80 girls and about 20 guys, so you do the math on that. It worked out pretty well. Um, I, uh, I truly believe that you make your own luck, and uh, at King's High School, uh, you were given every opportunity to succeed, and, and I can see that's even more prevalent right now. Um, Three years after, after leaving school, I suppose I had to, I had to make the decision uh, whether I wanted to pursue playing sport, you know, trying the, the long odds of getting in, in those rep teams or, or going down the performing arts path. And, and I think in my heart, I really enjoyed performing on stage. I was not too bad at it. I could sing a few tunes. And, uh, and I, just, I just loved the, the thrill, the buzz of being on stage and performing. Um, so three years after I, I left school, I, I left Dunedin and went over to Brisbane to, uh, to study at the Conservatorium of Music. Uh, that was a big move for me. I, I knew no one in Brisbane. So I went over there uh, by myself. Uh, I was over there for about six months by myself before my, my girlfriend joined me and we were still happily married, which is, which is great, 26 years on. Um, I acknowledge, I suppose, that uh, in the arts you, you really get to represent your country. So for me, uh, performing national anthems was a huge, a huge buzz for me. Uh, I've been lucky enough, um, as Doug said, to perform it about 12 times all around the world, and uh, some have been uh, amazing opportunities. You know, when you're standing in front of, of 50,000 or 80,000 people in a stadium, uh, I'm sure Darren's experienced that when the anthems are being played. It's, uh, you know, it really gets the heart. And if, if you have to sing the anthem, there's a bit more pressure can imagine uh, what's going on through your mind as you're, as you're standing there waiting for the, uh, the music to start. And I remember on one occasion, it was 
only about uh, four or five years ago at Suncorp Stadium, so there was about 52,000 people there. It was the uh, Australia versus South Africa uh, rugby match. So I was performing the Australian anthem. So uh, the music started. I was standing there, both teams either side. I was going, okay, here we go. And then the camera comes right up to about this, this close. <laughs> TV camera, I go, whoo, I wasn't expecting that, okay. And then the music started. It's going, right, here we go. As it was started, I went, oh shit, I can't remember the first line. <laughs> it's going, no, no this, this isn't happening. So inside, I was, I was shitting bricks. Outside, I was looking nice and calm going, I can't remember really this thing that's put on. I don't know the first line. So uh, at, the, at the moment when I had to sing, it just came to me, thankfully. Um, that would have been very embarrassing. And, you know, if you stuff up the anthem, that's, that's a bit like uh, dropping a sitter in cricket or uh, diving over the try line and you just drop the ball. So uh, certainly uh, I, was, I was pretty happy that that didn't happen. Um, my journey as a performer certainly, uh, you know, it hasn't been an easy road. As you can imagine, as an as a artist, performer, you have some, some good years and you have some bad years. Financially, it's always, always a bit of a roller coaster. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been hard, but, but all the time I've, I've been pretty lucky that, uh, that I've had some wonderful experiences and I've traveled the world doing what I love. And I love what I do and I have a great, a great passion for it. So, so I'm really, truly lucky, you know. Uh, I'm very lucky in that regard. Um, so I suppose that brings me to my to my take on life and, and how I've how I've lived my life pretty much from the fifth form at King's High School. I think uh, you know whether you're turning up for work or whether you're performing in a play, you're in a sporting team or you, or you turn up for, for work every day. You have to have a passion for what you're doing. Um, if you don't have that passion, then I, then I think you've got to really wonder what you're doing. Uh, I'm pretty lucky that I've been able to do that and, and I'm still still performing even now and uh, hopefully I'll do that for the next 20, 25 years if I can. Um, Kings High really taught me at, at a young age that uh, that if you want something, you just got to do it. You've got to go and get it. Um, you do all those extra training sessions, you, you work on your techniques and uh, you know you leave nothing in the tank. Uh, I'm sure that most of our successful icons throughout the world, whether it be sports or the arts or business, have one, one common theme, and it's pretty much, it's not how hard you get hit, but uh, how hard you get hit, and then keep moving forward. And uh, I really like that, that phrase, it's, you just gotta keep on getting up when things get down, and you just gotta do the, do the hard work. And I think that's when you really succeed. Um, I'm so lucky to be a part of Kings, and as we all are, it's a wonderful school and I'm, I'm so proud to be a, a King's High School old boy and, and I've made lots of, lots of friends, lifelong friends and uh, some special memories and it's wonderful to be back here tonight and I'm uh, looking forward to, uh, to tomorrow night and uh, the sports dinner and uh, sing a tune, sing a tune tomorrow night so uh, hopefully I remember the words, if I don't I'll just make them up and uh, you know thank you so much for inviting me here tonight and it's, uh, it's been a pleasure, thank you.